It's Thursday, January 19th, 2023, and this is FRC Media News. I'm Keith Thibault. There was an overwhelming outpouring of support for gay rights last Saturday in Fall River in the face of protesters. Construction on Route 79 begins in earnest this month, and local organizations are asked to apply for United Way's impact grants. All this and more coming up. Dozens of people supportive of Fall River's LGBTQ plus community gathered last Saturday outside the Fall River Public Library prior to the Fall River Pride Committee's monthly drag storytime reading. The last two monthly readings were disrupted by individuals representing anti-gay and neo-Nazi organizations spewing anti-Semitic and anti-queer slurs at participants and attendees. Only a handful of protesters were on hand across the street from the library and were drowned out by those rallying in support. Over a dozen Fall River police officers were on hand to patrol and maintain order. Fall River Pride Committee President Sean Connell, who as Miss Gloria was this month's drag queen reader, addressed those assembled to acknowledge there are many in Fall River who support honest conversations around sexual identity. This is not just one event. We are part of that national fabric, this narrative that's going around that's trying to make gay people hate themselves again, to make us feel that we're not normal or that we're wrong or that we're not okay or that we're not valid. And all of that is nonsense. What we are here to do today is spread love. What we're here to do today is show the queer kids in Fall River that we turn out for them. We, we queer adults, we're queer kids. And that's why, why kids? Why, is it, why do the Wiggles work with kids? The whole point of working with kids is so that they can learn that self-love and that they can understand that there is nothing wrong with them as they explore who they are in their authentic bodies with their own sexuality, with their own development, in their own times. This is not lewd. We LGBT people, we're not inappropriate. And here, with this number, with this crowd, we reject hate. So, thank you, thank you, thank you all again for coming. Overwhelmed by the turnout in support of the local LGBTQ plus community, Connell said, Fall River Prove, it is united against hate. But seeing this just like kind of blows my mind because it, it reminds me that it's not a one-to-one -one match, right? That we are the stronger majority. We are the ones who are putting this coalition of love together to make something incredible for Fall River and to make something incredible for the LGBT kids who are looking up to us and seeing this kind of narrative playing out in the world, but seeing that at least Fall River turns out for us. The more community support there is, the more we can get to a place where LGBT people are normalized too that we are here, we are brothers, we're sisters, we're cousins, we're friends, we're role models. I was born and raised in Fall River, this is my home. I grew up in this library, so I think the more support that we have, the more it's gonna be harder for any kind of Nazi or hate group to get a foothold in a community that shows up for love like this. Connor remains hopeful that as the community becomes better educated, more will become accepting of events such as Drag story time. I think they have a weird um, misunderstanding of what it means to work with kids, right? Um, I'm a youth development worker and I educate, right? So I work with kids as my day job. It's not lewd, it's not innately sexual, and I think that there's a lot of misinformation and rumors about what happens at a drag story time. What happens at our drag story time in about an hour when we get started is we're gonna read books. We're gonna have cute discussions about those books. We have little crown crafts. The kids are gonna walk away. We're all gonna be princesses and princes. And that's what we do. That's what this is. We are, we're trying to be the people that we needed when we were young, right? Well, I knew I was a queer kid when I was a kid. It wasn't innately sexual to talk about two moms having a family or two dads having a family or that love is love, right? None of that was innately this kind of grooming kind of rhetoric that you hear about what these story times are and are not. Mayor Paul Coogan was at the event and praised the work of local police. He did express concern, however, over the optics of those in attendance. It was a little unsettling. We had, um, we had met with the organizers a few times and we thought we had some things in place. We'll be sitting down with them again to find out um, where, we, where we did things right and where we did things wrong. But overall, it was, 
it was pretty it was a pretty safe event again i'm i'm concerned about the businesses in the area and uh, and bringing children into an environment like that as you were there keith um i think you'd have been hard pressed to walk your children across the front of that um library you know during the height of the back and forth between the groups and as you said the um the protesters that that weren't on the library property across the street there was only a few of them but they were loud and they were uh, definitely trying to antagonize uh, the people that were there for just the story hour the mayor went on to say the city will monitor the progress of future drag story readings at some point for any event in the city of fall river um there's got to be there's a cost factor to this and uh you know over time on a weekend it it's uh it adds up, which we tried to do the best we could with the number of guys we could get in there for that. And I thought, like I said, the former PD did a great job. The chief was there, uh, one of his deputy uh, um, commanders was also there, and there was enough guys around to make sure we kept it quiet. But at the same time, you know, for somebody that wanted to go to the library that morning or, or for the people that just wanted to go into the reading, it was a little bit of uh, yeah, you saw you had to weave your way through it. So, uh, you know, that's not what they wanted to have there. And that's not what the city wanted to have there. Um, the only people that want that kind of chaos are the, are the protesters. And even a small group of them, as you said, you know, gummed up the works a little bit. After two years of virtual events caused by the pandemic, Bristol Community College on Monday returned to its in-person celebration of the life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. In its 23rd year, the community breakfast and day of service activities at Bristol's Fall River campus connect the community with the issues of racial and social justice promoted by Dr. King. The keynote address at the morning breakfast was delivered by Dr. Rachel Jessica Daniel, Associate Professor of English at Massasoit Community College. She used her time to discuss the impact of King's widow, Coretta, who became the driving force in elevating Dr. King's message and establishing the federal holiday in his honor. She understood how radical King was. It was a dream that they shared, and she worked to make sure that his ideas, his philosophies were not lost to history because it's very easy when you see the wives of powerful men to just believe, oh, you know, they were silent, they didn't do much. But I wanted to demonstrate that Coretta Scott King was not someone who was just advancing Dr. King's dream. She had a dream of her own that she was working on long before she met King, and they impacted one a, a, another, and she moved it forward after he was killed. The college also sponsored an essay contest where students shared their reflections on Dr. King's impact on the community. Biology student Nicole Ferrero was this year's winner. She says as a society, we need to collectively do more to ensure everyone has the opportunity to succeed. We need to band together based on our similarities while being able to appreciate our many differences. Dr. King's dream needs every person on this planet in order to bring his dream to fruition. We have made leaps and bounds from the 1960s, but there is inequality and injustice happening today. I am coming from a place of privilege as a middle-class Caucasian woman. I recognize and understand that. However, I would be doing a great disservice to not use my privilege to bring light to social inequalities that affect our communities. As one person, change seems insurmountable. However, if we band together, change is more than possible, it is inevitable. I believe, as Dr. King did, that we are able to have a society where everyone is equal, loved, and valued. To make a change, we need to follow in the footsteps of Martin Luther King and use our voices the same way he proclaimed. We need to speak up for others when we see injustices, write to political figures and demand change, and use our voices to build others up instead of tearing them down. Last month, ground was broken on the long-awaited reconstruction of Route 79. Last night, the Massachusetts Department of Transportation provided more details on construction, which begins later this month. Design manager Jonathan Kappist says care will be taken to minimize impact within the waterfront neighborhood 
between now and when the project is complete in 2026. The overall project timeline is approximately four years. You can expect to see work occurring mostly during the day and weekdays, with some occasional night work needed for bridge demolition, culvert installation, and utility work. Throughout the project, there will be coordination with the butters to maintain local access and with emergency services to maintain their routes. As part of mitigating any disruption, major earthwork operations will be, within, will be with, confined within the work zones with the existing Route 79 bridges used as a construction roadway to move earth from the southern end of the project to the north. In addition to keeping the trucks off the local roads as much as possible, controlling and minimizing noise and dust is important. During construction, there will be noise monitoring systems in place. Work activities will be scheduled so that the work won't interfere with planned events and that louder activities would occur during colder months. The regular, work, the regular weekday work hours are 7 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Construction will take place in four stages. Project manager Stephen Cobb says over the next month, residents will begin to see work on the site. Over the next 30 days, DWI-SPS will begin completing work in stage one, including temporary pavement utilities to facilitate two lanes of traffic. Corey Street will also be modified facilitating U-turns in both directions. Within the next 30 days, we hope to begin stage 2A as well. This will mean the closing of the Route 79 Expressway, depending upon weather, will take place about a month from now. When complete, residents will gain better access from downtown to the waterfront, with approximately 19 acres of land available to the city for development. Let's take a look now at the latest COVID-19 statistics in Fall River based on a report released last Thursday, January 12th. Fall River had 142 new cases last week, up from 140 the week prior. There have been 34,496 cases of COVID since the onset of the pandemic in March of 2020. On the vaccination front, the city remains at 70% of those eligible having received at least one dose. 61% considered fully vaccinated, 30% have received at least one COVID booster, and 11% have received a second booster. As the fall and winter have progressed, the pandemic in Fall River has not been as impactful as it has been in years past. Tess Curran, Director of Health and Human Services in Fall River, says the number of COVID cases is likely being underreported as more people take at-home tests and do not report the results. The uptick in cases is common during the colder months and following the holidays, but eyes are now on a new COVID variant that may impact the country. This new variant's kind of just taking hold, um, so I, you know I can't really predict what the next few months will bring. Um, but you know we 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 just need to stay vigilant and continue to do those those right things for ourselves and the community um, to try and keep any numbers at bay um, but again that you know these things are continue to evolve we don't know what's going to come down the line um, but this new subvariant does seem to be you know highly contagious the same things that we've we've been hearing um, but but uh, you know, a lot of anecdotally, I'm hearing a lot of people, you know, are testing positive. People who haven't had COVID yet are testing positive. So, you know, it's it hasn't gone away. It's going to be here. We just need to learn how to, to deal with it and mitigate it and, and do the right thing. Ms. Curran says that the new COVID vaccines combined with personal care remain the best way to avoid becoming seriously ill if infected. When more people stayed somewhat isolated during the pandemic, that has resulted in higher instances of infection from other seasonal viruses. We did have a significant um, bump in flu cases in the month of December. They're kind of petering, petering out a little bit here in um, January, um, but the flu you know, season can last through May. So again, getting that flu shot is going to be really important to help you know, either reduce the impacts or the duration of, of the illness. Um, but we have been seeing, you know, all those respiratory, um, you know, diseases here in the community. So going back to all those things, just washing your hands, staying home when you're sick, um, avoiding, you know, high-risk family members, things like that. 
Children were more seriously impacted this fall from flu and other respiratory illness. Ms. Curran says now that we are past the holidays, it's likely that infections will lessen. Typically, we kind of see it, it you know, um, decrease in, in late winter. Um, um, and so we, we're likely to see that again. We, we saw an increase in, in flu in December. You know, those COVID numbers are, you know, going to be increased a little bit after the holidays and as we continue to be indoors. Um, but typically, that flu season does begin to wind down kind of late late winter as we move into early spring um, traditionally. Even though as a society we appear to be less concerned about viral infections, Ms. Curran says people should still practice good hygiene and don't get rid of those masks quite yet. Think of your mask like a raincoat. We put our raincoat on when it's raining. We should put our mask on when we are either sick or when there's you know high community spread. So just kind of rethinking how these masks work and, and how we should use them. Um, so it is here for the long haul, so we need to, you know, be prepared and, and just kind of learn how to deal with it in a safe way that we can continue to live our lives, but also to keep our loved ones safe, our, our you know, family members safe. We'll have more FRC Media News right after this. Here are some job descriptions on the latest top jobs list from the Mass Hire Fall River Career Center. Human Resource Manager, Plant Fine Foods, located at 630 Current Road, is seeking a full-time Human Resource Manager to work with personnel at all levels, providing qualified people for the job, a work environment, and a culture in an atmosphere conducive to team through a variety of methods. Job number 181-29883. HVAC Service Technician, Lennox International, located at 425 Pleasant Street, is looking for a full-time HVAC Service Technician, responsible for installation, maintenance and servicing of heating, ventilating, and air conditioning systems for commercial customers. Job number 181-75268. Creative Designer, Bristol Community College, located at 777 Ellsbury Street, is looking for a full-time creative designer, responsible for the college's graphic design and digital animation. Job number 181-42795. Assistant Restaurant Manager, D'Angelo's, located at 1040 North Main Street, is looking for a full-time Assistant Restaurant Manager. For more information, call 508-677-2322. Highland DMD Corporation, located at 673 Robeson Street, has an immediate need for the following full and part-time positions. Receptionist, job number 18169092. Dental Assistant, job number 18169089. For more information about these and other positions, visit Mass Hire Job Quest at jobquest.dcs.eol.mass.gov or call the Mass Hire Fall River Career Center at 508-730-5000. Hi, I'm Tess Curran, Director of Health and Human Services for the City of Fall River. I know that we're all tired of COVID-19. However, COVID remains a threat in our community. Anybody can become infected with COVID-19, especially children. Therefore, it's critical that parents consider getting their children vaccinated. We realize that children already get a lot of vaccines as it is when they're young. Uh, so to add one more can be a lot for parents. But just like the other vaccines have basically helped eliminate many of the diseases that they were designed to fight, same thing with COVID. As a parent, when we were thinking about how to approach the vaccination process with them, we were really looking at what the benefits were versus what the risks were. You know, they're three active kids. They like to play outside, they like to run around, and we wanted to keep them as healthy as possible. We talked to our pediatrician, what was going to be the best move for all three of them. For parents who have questions about the vaccine, the best thing you can do is ask your pediatrician. There was a little pinch, but it wasn't really that bad. Anyone six months and older is eligible to receive the COVID-19 vaccine. For questions, please contact your doctor or visit frvax.com for additional information. Welcome back. It has thus far been a quiet winter in Fall River with no significant snowstorms to date. That has not stopped the city of Fall River, however, from continuing to seek volunteers who can help shovel out residents if the need arises. 
I think people don't volunteer for snow removal unless they see snow. It's like we have right. a few calls and a few people came in, but at the same time, it's nowhere what it was. And and uh, and I obviously I have no interest in any snow in the city of Fall River. I think it's uh, just it, it's just another headache that you have to deal with on the job. But at the same time, we would like to see if there's some people that would be interested in if we do have snow that would come out and help our seniors get their car out get their walkway cleared off so they can get out to the store or go visit someone um you know that th it's just it's just a good community uh a community taking pride in the community and some community spirit i i, I don't think anything's wrong with it and contact the office if you're interested in helping and guess what i hope we never call you that would be a a good winter for me. The United Way of Greater Fall River has begun accepting applications from community organizations for its impact grant program for the 2023-2024 fiscal year. Executive Director Kim Smith says the grants are a way for innovative organizations to fund community-minded projects that fit within the mission of the United Way to benefit our region. It's a 501 C3 nonprofit agencies that is within our service area, the Greater Fall River United Way's footprint, um, and it's for health and human services. Really, that's that's our key focus area, and within those those pillars of focus, health, education, financial stability, and some of them are summer programs that offer and provide out of school enrichment opportunities. Um, you know, learning opportunities and, and engaging students in, in different manners, youth and students, I, you know, um, some run the school year, the academic year, and some run all 12 months. Um, some are uh, focused on behavioral health, some are focused on art and, um, and, you know, mental and emotional support, some are focused on substance abuse. It really does run the gamut based on a lot of the nonprofit health and human service agencies that are here in the Greater Fall River area. Last year, the United Way funded 26 organizations with grants of up to $10,000. It plans to fund a similar number of projects for the 2023-2024 fiscal year. Impact grants were really kind of designed around new and innovative programming. Certainly some existing programming uh, continues to get funded that's proven to be successful and, and really making an impact on our community. Uh, but it's a great opportunity for a uh, new program or an existing agency that's considering shifting their focus or, or changing their programming to test the waters. Um, we don't do multi-grant funding, so it's not necessarily designed to build capacity in that manner. However, if it's uh, proven to be successful, obviously a grant can, you know, uh, submitted the next year would have uh, positive feedback, if you will. So it's a, it is a great opportunity for new and innovative programs to be considered. The deadline for applications to the program is February 6th at 4 p.m. The United Way is hosting a number of virtual question and answer sessions for organizations seeking additional information on applying for the impact grants. For more information, including a download of the impact grant handbook, please visit uwgfr.org slash impact dash grants. We'll wrap up this edition of FRC Media News right after this. Welcome to Hot Dogs and Cool Cats. Today we have a special treat for you. This is Prism. Uh, Prism here is a blue and gold macaw. Uh, Prism was surrendered to us and was in kind of rough shape. We do need an owner who knows about macaws and large birds. Um, we would prefer somebody who has owned these guys in the past or currently owns them and wants to add another one to the flock. Prism here is about 30 years old. Prism will come with this whole beautiful cage that we're in. We would prefer somebody who owns their home because these guys can be loud and obnoxious. Prism came to us with an overgrown beak, so our beak is a little funny and that will require treatment throughout his whole life. Um, he will need uh, constant beak trims. So if you want to come see Prism, feel free to come on down to Forever Paws. Uh, feel free to fill out an application form and then we can kind of go from there and set up an appointment for you to actually come and meet him. Today we have my lady. My lady is about six years old. She's a domestic short haired cat. She's very lovable. She likes being held. She also loves being in her comfy bed, which I just took her out of for this, but she's, she's very tolerable to being held. Um, she's gonna be a cuddle kitty for somebody. Um, she would do good in almost any home. 
Um, she does like to chill and relax. She's very calm. I'd say she'd do good with children. She still does need to be fixed. She'd make a, a great addition to any home. If you'd like to meet my lady, give us a call at Forever Paws, 508-677-9154, and come on down and meet her. She would love to meet you. Hi, I'm Tess Curran, the Director of Health and Human Services for the City of Fall River. COVID continues to circulate in the community and we need to be aware of the resources available to us. These resources include testing, treatments, and vaccinations. As we enter into the, the flu season, the winter season, the biggest advice I can give to all people of our community is to monitor themselves for symptoms and uh, home tests for COVID are available and I encourage people to do those tests to, to isolate um, if they have symptoms or if they test positive to COVID and then to really reach out to their medical provider if they do test positive on one of the home tests. There are treatments available now for COVID. Uh, many of them are very effective in preventing hospitalization and severity of symptoms. The manufacturers of the, the COVID uh, vaccines have updated their vaccines to meet the new variants that we see in our community, including Omicron. And so I encourage people to uh, get the booster vaccine. For individuals who have questions about COVID or the new vaccines that are coming out, um, I recommend that they reach out to their medical provider uh, or they can look at the local resources on the frvax.com website. That's all for this edition of FRC Media News. Please visit our website at frmedia.org for all the latest news and local information. FRC Media News airs Thursdays at 6 p.m. and Fridays at 5.30 p.m. For all of us at FRC Media News, have a great weekend. We'll see you next Thursday.